السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله هذا السؤال يتعلق بتوزيع الاكل في مناطق خطيره سيدي كيف تكون في وسط درونكين بعد انرجي people if having to hand out food to them yeah i i would stay away from drunken people and and people that may be physically dangerous so that's not what we're encouraging for people so when our guys go down to the shelter areas they work with the shelter organizations and it's always men we don't allow the women to go with them because could be unsafe for for people they only allow to take their children when it's at the the food bank when the conditions are safe so going straight out onto the streets and in, in where people may have knives and they're mentally disturbed and on drugs and crack right now in Vancouver the government is giving away crack mushrooms heroin and cocaine free as if they 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 couldn't kill the people faster so we wouldn't recommend those types of situations to go out and say hey, here's like a hamburger for you. So you have to work with the charity organizations where they're already feeding and say that can we come and bring food so that the, they can be fed and then are there parks where there are more sort of softer types of people that look they're having difficulty or they're panhandling and asking and then you try to give out wherever it's safe, never putting yourself uh, women or children in danger inshaAllah so it takes a a bit of sort of contemplation and, and be very careful. And then food banks is finding a, the Muslim food banks and asking if they need food in their area and can we bring meat, can we bring food and food supplies. And then taking the flyer with the shirt, wear the shirt, print out some pictures of uh, the group in, in Los Angeles and Chicago and in Vancouver. And then taking a letter to them and saying that, can I pick up some of the food that you're about to throw in the bins to Costco and coffee companies and bakery companies. And most likely inshaAllah if they're not already overwhelmed by people picking it up they say, yeah you can have one of the days and then our people will come, come always like a uniform otherwise they're, they're going to be thinking you're sketchy coming in your regular clothes taking all their food. They think you're going to take it home and sell it or eat it. So we have to go always with the uniform with our letterhead and, and produce uh, and these people give and inshaAllah with wudu and, and ask for du'a before you go, make a du'a and that Allah open. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs. Our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. For us, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Just want to say thank you. I felt a great blessing and connection to Olia and our Grand Shaykhs when I received the Asa from SMC merch store a few days ago. Thank you. MashaAllah, Allah bless you and thank you for your support and it goes a long way. Again everything is, is, is relevant, people may come and say, oh this is so expensive, yeah we're not a Costco. So this is common sense to people that you, we're not buying in huge amounts to have huge discounted prices. This is a organized bake sale. So I don't know if you were ever in masjid fundraising, people were going and making cookies and, and cakes and coming back to the masjid and trying to sell them for twenty dollars. Well you could make the cake for three dollars and you're trying to sell it for twenty dollars but the intention was for the good service and good deed. So I mean this goes to support and support our organization, support our projects and support everything that we do, support our center. So it's, it's, not, a, it's not a normal thing. So yes you could find it cheaper somewhere else or other things cheaper. 
But that wasn't the understanding to find it cheaper. If you want a discount then get something else somewhere else. But if you want it to support then it's greatly appreciated and it has its own du'a and its own blessings. The people whom are supporting is written for them that they support it. And on top of that it has its blessing. So if it was a ring and asa and anything from the sunnah then again it has its immense blessings and, and reality to it. So alhamdulillah that those blessings and, and support go sort of noticed. We see everything, we pray for everyone that, that's supporting. So alhamdulillah, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is it possible to face jealousy within tariqah? Example, we do service to make our shaykh happy but our co-tariqah brother and sisters doesn't like it. Please forgive our ignorance. No, I think that's all we've been talking about lately so I don't know where you've been. I may be in a more subtle way trying to tell you these things. That's my whole reference is that because we don't deal with non-tariqah people, they have nothing to do with us. So it's, it's the family, you know the, it's the, the eleven brothers of Sayyidina Yusuf that tried to kill him. Meaning what? It's one family, <laughs> you have to be worried about your family because that's where the danger is. Right? Even in your own home, your, your neighbor has certain hasad but your family has even more hasad because they want what you have, they want what the, all these things. So you always have to be very political with your dealing with your family. One is you don't try to show too much to them, at the same time you, you gotta do what you gotta do, you can't sort of uh, stop everything for that. That's why we say that if the family is not going to teach tariqah and marifah and not teach the adab of meditating, contemplating, then these students all over the world are going to be really rough and really wild. So that has this uh, education in it, in itself. So when you say, oh we're, lis we're listening to shaykh and he's teaching us to meditate, contemplate, come against our anger and you interact with somebody else and you say, oh my gosh look at the, the character. Then proof for you that they really need Shaykh Nochan because they're not being uh, taught character and they're vulgar, they speak in a way that you're, why would you say that this is Ahlul Bayt, this is a shaykh, how could you talk like that? So because of that then people at least now understand that not everybody's being trained. So the people whom are being trained they have to operate accordingly, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi As Salaamu If instead of helping people directly we pray for them, is this still competing with Allah and does it still lead to carrying their burdens? Praying for people? No, this is the not competing with Allah. Though those articles you have to read when it talks about competing with Allah are the people who want to take away a difficulty. So the people come to them and say, I'm sick and they pray really hard to take away the sickness. But then you should understand in your heart that you should pray that for what Allah wants, Ya Rabbi whatever you want for them let it to be blessed. Because the concept is important that, why Allah gave the person a sickness if you're praying to take it away, who are you? Means Allah has a, a wisdom in why a servant becomes sick or why a servant has their rizq uh, cut or why they're… and did they pick up the wisdom yet? So when people are, are emailing us, I have this and this and this, well, most likely they get a reply to meditate. They say, well that's not the, what I was looking for. They're looking for somebody come back, Ya Shaykh prayed for you everything will be okay and be resolved. Yeah he's praying for you but the resolution may be in something much deeper. So that you have to identify what's within you that's causing this issue. If rizq is coming short then means there's something in the awrads that have to be done, something in, in a recognition and understanding that has to be done because that was the Surat Al-Kahf. When the boat goes down means the shaykh there's a training that has to be done. So maybe they're not doing the awrad, maybe they're not doing the practices so to get their attention the rizq is going to be cut or slowed. 
health and other issues then maybe they have to make their muraqabah and contemplation, make their durood the sharif like we said last night. After talking to people, many people don't make any salawats other than the two or three hundred that's in the awrad if they're doing the awrad. Then your question was then, where, where did you think your energy was coming from? It was just coming to you on a daily basis because you went to the grocery store? No, but you had to sit and make salawats is your fuel, it's the fuel for your energy. So how to improve your energy is then to make your salawats and build your energy and that becomes the source of your healing and shifa for everything inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam I think you just answered this. Guidance for someone who found a deep connection with this path but is finding it very hard to do the salawats too because of the mind playing tricks. Yeah, the mind playing tricks, you just have to keep doing your salawats. Because yeah, the, there's a devil inside that is not happy with the person trying to build themselves. So you, you need to put that fire and those spiritual energies to put down that shaitan and he's not leaving peacefully. So if, if you have a squatter in your apartment, you come back, you come back there's a squatter in there and you just open the door and say, please leave. He's not leaving, he's very comfortable there. You have to call the police, you have to do all sorts of uh, things to get somebody out. Imagine inside the body there's a shaitans and jinn that are squatting inside of people. They're not living peacefully so that means they have to do their salawat, their energy practices, their muraqabah, all of their practices to push bad energy out and to keep the good energy in inshaAllah. Get the book on energy, the book on meditation inshaAllah. What's the name of the book on energy? Now it's the council of three wise men, nobody knows the, the book on energy? Still you don't know from last night you don't know the, the name of the, the energy book? In pursuit of angelic power. Which one? In pursuit of angelic power. There we go, alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Is it okay to want to move and be around more Muslims so we can be in a good community? Yeah I think we talked about that last night too. Try to safeguard your belief and your practice is within your home and your online environment. That's your safest community is that just to do your practices, build your energy, keep the sanctity of your home like a cave and your family and your children. N being around another group of Muslims is not necessarily going to bring you any peace. Because you may go there and they attack everything you do. So they may say, what are you doing like this? What's this? What's that? So this is you know after 30 years of, of being on these teachings and this path, see the most amount of difficulties are going into the darqahs and centers because they go in and they want to attack everything, you know, they want to teach something different. They you go into regular masjid they say, what well, is this tasbih? Why are you wearing a ring? Well, why is like this? So not necessarily finding an association of people is going to sort of build your, your sense of belief. That you have to do independent of everything. Belief is not a congregational practice where we'll get like 20 people together and they're all different types of backgrounds and they're going to encourage you to meditate and contemplate. They're going to come after you and say, why you pray like this? Why are your feet spread out like this? Why are you wearing this type of head cover? Why are you wearing turban? So that doesn't necessarily answer uh, the question to, to sort of improve oneself. The improvement has to be on an individual private basis. They connect, they meditate, they have a strong connection, strong understanding. And then later on test and go to visit some masjids and see if you have any difficulties. And usually the women and children will have the most difficulty because the women's section is fierce where they you know will attack you, what's like this, what's like that, why you like this. And they're the least uh, knowledgeable. So you have 
unknowledgeable people attacking other people coming into the masjid and the children running and screaming and you'll be probably behind anything that you can't even hear the teaching. So doesn't necessarily resolve issues. Before you move and completely uproot your family, go visit places and see if you enjoy it. Go to a local masjid, go to a local place and see if it's something that's enjoyable for the entire family and that they don't have difficulties in, in those events inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Were watcher angels real? Were Harut and Marut similar to this concept of watchers? I don't know the watchers and the book of Enoch and uh, all the TikToks that are out and everything now is like a soup. They mixed everything, everything together, Nephiliums, Ephiliums and all the giants and all these different things. Yeah, so these are you know. There are a lot of stories that are entertaining but uh, we can stick with what Prophet brought for us that the angels are real and that uh, in the beginning at the first stages they didn't truly understand the test of Adam and Eve and that they would create much bloodshed the angels that had dared to even talk about Allah's creation. Because they had been tainted by the teachings of shaitan and bad character. But as a result of not appreciating the station of Bani Adam and the difficulty of coming to earth, Harut and Marut were sent down as a test. So, you think you can survive uh, in their world? And thinking that, yes, this must be easy, sure. So, you won't survive a day. And they came to earth and immediately they fell from grace within that day and they fornicated, made zina, killed and drank and did everything. So the other angels watching would perceive that the life in Adam, of Adam and Eve on earth is not something easy. The shaitan is fiercely attacking them, they struggle to keep their faith. They're going to make sins, they have to repent and that they have to know that they're not… Uh, to be nothing, to be humble. But the angelic station thinking it was very high that this would be a breeze and be something easy and it was not. The angels that fell to earth, this is something different because the Azazil who was teaching was a jinn and as he was teaching many angels began to accompany his teachings. And as a result we have talks on that, that it's not only the knowledge that you take from somebody because that's the liquid, that's the, the pure drink, but the glass in which you take it from can be tainted. So when they were learning from shaitan who was first the Azazil, and then later became shaitan the cursed one whom when Allah threw him out. They were picking up his character, so he had a pride within his character. And as a result of taking the teachings from him they were picking up the characteristics of pride and arrogance and when Allah had enough and didn't want them all to become tainted he sent the test, bow down so that the angels could see he has a hidden characteristic of pride within him. His uloom and knowledge is yes very high but he has pride and arrogance within him and he wouldn't bow. And as a result of not bowing then all those whom were taught by him they also had the arrogance. That's why then the question came that, why would you create this khalifa when you know they have… they're going to do much bloodshed. Those were not the good angels that opened their mouth. Those were the ones whom taught by shaitan and they had arrogance and pride and they were all cast out. So, you and your students will be thrown out from the heavens. So then the jinn and the angels were thrown to earth. At that time then they mixed with the humans and created a fitna. And the angels that came to earth they taught mankind these different deceptions and music and makeup and all of these things 
to come against mankind because they were angered by Bani Adam and his awlad and his, uh, and his progeny. So that was their war against the Adam and Eve and the children of Sayyidina Adam because they were thrown out of heaven because of him. So they took upon deceiving and, uh, and misleading his nation and that became then the, the condition of their, their knowledges and their teachings upon the earth. That was first. Then after a period of time came Harut and Marut thinking, still it's easy, we'll be able to pass these tests and they didn't pass. And Allah left them as a sign upon the earth within the tower of Babel, within the well of Babel. And that's where the war in Iraq was established, was to reach towards that well to take uh, black magic, the source of all black magic. That's why they went there, that was not for weapons of mass destruction but were for the knowledges of angels mass destruction. They immediately seized that well, no planes, helicopters, anything could travel in that region. And then they brought people in to learn what they wanted to learn for the arrival of Dajjal inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, there's a lot of influence against our beliefs in the school system in this month of June. How to protect our children? Do we keep the kids at home? Do we talk to the teachers? Yeah, this is like uh, the time of loot. So they're aggressive fighting people and uh, that you, we would imagine that is very dangerous. So they're not going to change by talking to them. This is now Dajjal and his plan on what he wants to do and, and similar to the difficulties of Prophet Lut in which the people were coming and attacking his door and his house. So this is the situation that they have. Now can you strategically get out with sicknesses and travel? You can try and see if that works and, and you know best of luck to people who can try to do that. If the children are older and, and getting them out of certain classes and events and that again depending upon what your area is trying to teach and what type of events they're trying to have then every parent has to use the judgment that, that the, and the ability that they have to, to pull the child out of those events inshaAllah. But to go and think you'll talk to them and they'll say, oh you sound like you're correct, okay yeah that's not a good idea. <laughs> they have the CEO of the largest hedge fund with 11 trillion dollars saying that these companies have to do that otherwise they'll be fired. So even the head of their corporations and their money is telling everybody that all these companies have to do this. And he's threatening to fire them, so every corporate manager now has to do these things otherwise they'll be fired. So there's not a time anymore where you're going to go and give them a conversation and they're going to say, MashaAllah this Islam is amazing, we, we agree with you, we won't do this. They actually got in fights, so these communities are going on the street and saying, we're not going to do that and they send other communities to come and fight them. And so it's just probably the most peaceful thing is just the kid is sick and thank you very much or we have to travel to go back home for a little bit and then we'll be back. So whatever you can do with the hikmah and a wisdom not to sort of stir the whole, whole hornet's nest inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Allah. Does our du'a actually change Allah's decision? This relating when you've said to ask for Allah's will to take place. Do you think that your du'a can change Allah's decision? No, absolutely not. So means Allah's will is always going to take place. But your du'a may be Allah's will. So that's, that's what's important is that we make du'a with the intention, Ya Rabbi whatever your will is, may it be done and the hikmah and the wisdom and I'm making my du'a, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and Ila Shurafa Nabi 
But try not to impose your desire on everything because Allah may grant you the desire and it may not be good and its outcome may not be good. That's why they say, be careful what you pray for because if Allah accepts the du'a and it was written to be accepted then you know it may not be what's good and best for somebody. So we always pray that whatever Allah wants, layanta maqsudi wa ridat matloob, I beg your forgiveness and seek your rida and satisfaction in everything and that if you know it to be good for me Ya Rabbi alhamdulillah bring it near for me and if you know it to be bad for me Ya Rabbi keep it away from me, inshaAllah. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ya Nusharif al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam alayhi wa sahbihi kiram wa lam shaykhina fi tariqatan ashbadiyyat al aliyya wa sayyidi wa sadatina wa siddiqina al fatiha. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.